Um, to anyone who's <laughs> was just watching me streaming, uh, I just turned my computer off, uh, which was intelligent of me. Uh, so uh, the stream died. Excuse me. You may not all find this. Anyway, I will have to continue. Hi. There's probably a load of people, like, literally in the stream previously. I don't really know how it works. If you, like, if your stream breaks, um, you can't really pick up a stream. Maybe you can. I don't know. Anyway, for those who uh, are just joining us, um, I... Uh, <laughs> I actually automatically turn my computer off at 11 o'clock. Uh, it's 11 o'clock here in the UK. So intelligently, um, that made the stream stop. Uh, so that'll be why. Um, so, oh well. Part two is what this is of this paint drying a fun, paint dry a fun. And unfortunately, I'm no closer to having these ICs uh, into place. Yes, I turn my computer off. Uh, it automatically shut down at 11 o'clock <laughs> whilst I was using it, uh, which was really clever. Oh, well. Um, excuse me. Part two. Integrated circuit connections. I'm struggling with this. God, there's loads of stuff. I'm like not even halfway through this document. I don't think, I'm, well, maybe I'm going to have to go to bed. TL072, right, is that. Let's put one in. Yes, you're right about the Atom Mini. Oh. This flickering thing it doesn't flicker in real life, but yes, it can stream. And I probably should set that up so it's independent of the thing, but I can actually see the screen, which is quite useful. So, But yeah, that was clever of me, wasn't it? I actually did check beforehand and I thought I'd disabled it, but I hadn't. Hence it dying. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back. Part two of this thrilling, gripping piece of entertainment. So if there is an orientation on this, is it the little dot? Is Tom Whitwell in the chat? Have we got you, Tom? Lord Thomas of Whitwell, are you here? Because it was really helpful having you there. Possibly you've got better things to do. Uh, nope, I would say definitely you have better things to do. So I'm just zooming in on the picture, and the picture is it. The little dot is the notch. Yeah, thank you, people, for confirming. The dot is the notch. The notch is the dot. More ways than one. Thank you for confirming. This is another good reason for live streaming your uh, builds. <laughs> you can just ask complete strangers. Hi, I... I don't really know what I'm doing. Can you tell me what to do? Please. Thanks. Could you just do this for me? I don't know if it's better to do it like this. I think I need the pliers, don't I? I really don't want to force this and bend its little pins. I think generally I've sort of done them by putting one in, pushing it. And seating it down. Come, sir. Oi, that looks well dodge. Full dog's dinner. Colossal dinner of dog. Excuse me. Well, I had to do this in a way that's like efficient and actually accurate. 
Fires would have been better. Yeah, the whole like bending the legs on a flat surface is a good idea, but I'm just sort of at this point, I'm like, oh, I think it's close enough. Thank you, MC202, for your tip. I'll have to buy me a drink to steady my hands. My gin's run out. Mm. Anyway, moving on. That's one. God, this is like... Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't, is 10 Swedish kroner about 3p? I'm sure it's not. I'm not so familiar with. But my thanks. Um... CD-408-BE. I guess the BE is not really relevant. CD-408's going here. Two of them, in fact. And they're here, little neighbours. So look, I am going to try and like bend these bad boys. Good evening. The YouTube video that talks back. You can ask it questions. Oh, that's really helpful. Yes, he says 4081 in the center. That's really quite useful. 4081's going there. It just helps you. Looking good. Notch four oh eight one four oh eight one. What would happen if you got the chips in the wrong holes? Nothing good, I bet. Wouldn't be like a cool hack. Hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I think the orientation is good. It's just getting a little like pointy, pointy legs in, you know. Correct. <laughs> oh, I stabbed myself with a IC. But just getting the little legs in. My legs are splayed. Excuse me while I try and straighten them a bit more. I don't know. Boom. What next? The CD4015. One of these. Roll your, roll your chip.
equals 0, 0.15. Oop, E, my friend, go there. Hmm, that's not very flush. Just push harder, right? All sorts of out. These do not look happily seated. I think they're probably fine now. They look all right. <laughs> Frederick, I dropped a drum kit down the stairs once. Wow. I have spoken to someone um, who was in this chat earlier who dropped a 30,000 pound speaker down the stairs once as well, which was quite an impressive achievement. <laughs> I think it was fine, which is, I think that's maybe more impressive. Grim static, you have a point. <laughs> you definitely have a point. I didn't solder in the there's no little socket to go there, a little box junction. We'll fix that in a sec. But yes, thank you, a good shout. Yeah, another brilliant reason for doing this on video so that people can just be like, You're an idiot. Hello, idiot. <laughs> Dear idiot, have you noticed that you have done it wrong? No, I hadn't noticed I've done it wrong, but thank you for pointing it out. <laughs> Weirdly, I've never had a problem with my builds because I just farm in help from the internet. Oh, no. Where's my... Oops. This definitely isn't straight. Nice, nice little wave in here. Eek. Yes, job. It is the the tabletop technique is a good one. I'm sort of kind of I've not got a really good technique except to say that I will I sort of bed in one side sometimes. Well, I use the tabletop and then we'll like bed in a side and then kind of bend them into place, which is what I'm attempting to do now and. I'm not sure I would take my own advice, but hey, it's in, so got there in the end. It is in flush, uh, 40, 50. Another. Oh, Nigel Tedbury, you have my sympathies. I, I, Hex mix is just an awful looking build. I am, um, I got mine built, and I, there's just no way I think I could ever have done that. Yeah, the hex mix is like just the dark souls of builds, <laughs> souls like as a build. Oh, that was like just smooth as butter. That well-known smooth <laughs> thing.
Oh, the noise plethora is brilliant. I mean, I don't know in terms of build. Once again, I got it built. But as a module, it, it's one of those modules where I didn't really appreciate how good it would be until I had one. It is really good, especially with the percor. Boom. But, as well pointed out, we've missed a stage. Bloody idiot, getting the mech bag. And that. And fingers crossed, it will be able to go in flat, even with the. Mm. Yeah, the height of the ICs makes it hard for this to be completely flat. But probably I can do something really stupid like try and lean it against something. And then what we'll do is we'll only solder in one leg and we will check that it is definitely flush. Yeah, masking taping it is one solution, but this is quicker <laughs> if it works. Straight, I think. Looks straight-ish. I'm sure it's fine. Let's just go for it. The Mylar Melody story. <laughs> Nigel Spuren asks, can you recommend um, cool, lesser known effects modules, reverbs and delays. Um, I can, I wouldn't say lesser known though, but I would say my, one of my favorite reverbs, two reverbs is the make noise herb verb, which is just amazing, algorithmic and gorgeous and wonderful. And it, you can push it around. It's modeless, so you just use seven dials um, and you can push it into just a whole load of places. And it's got like cool things like the pre-delay can be clocked. So you've got like tempo synced pre-delay, really cool. But it just sounds amazing. It's like a really gorgeous sounding thing. But then the other amazing reverb is the Dirt for A199. The Dirt for Spring reverb is brilliant. It just sounds great. It's like a gorgeous and I would say like the stock tank sounds really good. You don't need like the, um, I bought a bigger tank for it and I don't think you need it. It doesn't actually sound better than the stock one because the stock one has got this kind of nice kind of density to it. That, yeah, it's really nice. Um, and then there's like effects wise, there's loads of other things. Probably the coolest, I mean, God, where's the start? Like the, um, if you're into DIY, of course, there's that thing that you can basically get the Halls of Valhalla card on an Erica Synth Pico DSP, which is amazing. Um, hi, Jesse. Nice to see you. Um, and that allows you to run Halls of Valhalla on a 3HP module, which is just bonkers um but it does require some diy but it's quite easily done it's something that i do mention in a video um and yeah other suggestions are available noise engineering versio i've never tried any of the noise engineering effects but i bet they're good because they know their algorithms um the fx aid i think is amazing like the happy nerding effects aid 
just sounds really good. It sounds like way better than it has any right to. Um, take the hex posts and screw them into the top boards. Okay, I guess this is a mech bag thing. Ooh, the Dreadbox Splash. I don't know that one. Oh yeah, Rainmaker. Good grief. That's a good shout. Yes, Rainmaker is absolutely bananas. But not for the faint of heart. But it it's genuinely incomparable. <laughs> the only thing I could attempt to comparable it to would be like a H3000. And even then, it's a different beast. Um, it is bananas. And there's no software that's like it either that I know of. Correct me if you know something, but I <laughs> like bloody nothing. It is insane. So I guess there's, there's these two little screws. We have to screw this in. the little hole in the thing. Next thing you're going to tell me I need a screwdriver. Aha, now that I do have. As a modular synthesis, I have lots of screwdrivers handy. I assume this is what I'm supposed to do here, which is screw this in. Yeah, the, I can definitely recommend the whole Erica Synth Pico thing. Because then, with the Pico and the Halls of Valhalla, you basically got a Valhalla DSP reverb in 3 HP. <laughs> I did try, I've got the Erica Synth BBD. I didn't, I'm not really gelled with that. I just not I don't kind of sort of found what it's good for, but it's very short, so it probably is more of a chorus than a um, than a delay. Delay wise, the Mimia phone, make noise Mimia phone is just awesome. Although it's not really about rich, gorgeous sounding delays, it's more about its ability to just kind of pad things out. Note: Is it late? Go to bed and do the rest tomorrow. You have a far better chance of building a functioning module that way. Best soldering advice you'll ever get. That's what you think. I mean, there are there are more pages. <laughs> that is true. Um, I will have to try the BBD on a techno base. We'll try that. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things like there's um, quite often, I mean, I'm, as a classic example of that is like, uh, or of what I was about to say is um, Morphogene, you know, when I tried that, I didn't really get it when I, before I made a video that was when I was like doing the sort of prep for it. I was like, I don't really understand what this, what I'm supposed to be doing with this, like blah, 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 blah. But um, what it required was that I, I not sort of bring assumptions to it and learn what it is best at. Um, and in the case of Morphogene, it's like, treat it like a tape lab, you know, to treat it like a little laboratory of tape and not as a delay or a sampler. Because I don't think it's, that's what it's about. 4016, 4016. Michael says, don't go to bed. I know, I'm sort of sorely tempted just to carry on because I'm like, I don't often get a chance. Well, I kind of want to be too late. That's also why I made my computer turn off at 11 is to try and stop myself from staying up late because um, with a little unit that can wake up early, boring as it is, 
you just have to actually be well rested so you can function and be a family member. Boring, I know. But important. Okay, so I pushed all the little things in. Let's move on to the other PCB, which we will call Jack. Oh my God, there's a load of things on Jack as well. There's kind of as many things as we've done here. It's quite a big... Looks like it's taken a long time. Well, it's taken two hours, two and a bit hours. Um... Identify the diode. Maybe we can do a bit. Mm, that looks important. Mm -mm. Where's this diode? So there's like a yellow bag. Yellow bag of stuff. Wait, what? Uh, LEDs. <laughs> I literally am like, mm, maybe I'm just tired. I'm like, the, literally, Tom just told me to go to bed. No, I don't want to go to bed. I want to finish the module. <laughs> it's got in here. Nope. Well, we're not going much further if we haven't got this bloody thing. Where is it? Oh dear. It's a 1N418. Uh, 1N4148. 1N4148. No. No. 1N4148. 1N4148. One N four one four eight. One N four one four eight. I read a book that's like if you're looking for something you should say it over and over. Boom. One N four one four eight. By saying it over and over, like book, 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 if you're looking for a book. Apparently it helps you find it. Fun fact. Yeah. What's that? Pretty easy to mislay, not exactly the biggest of parts, but important, I'm sure. Let's use the Acid Energy's uh, cool tower. Thank you, mate. Where does it go? And it has an orientation, so get it right. Got it right. Uh, goes in here, D2. Why didn't they say D2? Look at that. Laid perfectly, thanks to my doofer. We're aligned, don't worry.
I'm here to enable drunken module purchases. Whatever you need, you can just ask this person on the internet and I'll enable it for you. That's my job. While our melodies enable a, that's what it says on my business card. Yes, yes, you do definitely need it. You can always sell it for most of what you paid for it. It's all a learning experience. It'll probably go up in price in a few months. <laughs> Etc. Yeah. Diode. And the solder. 31 k resistors. I'm regretting the fact that I didn't put that back in the bag, so I'm not actually... It, it was like cards. 1K, 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 1K. <laughs> then 1K, there you go. It's actually always this bag. Three 1K resistors. Let's use the little tower. Aux Pin asks, what's the name of the resistor bending gizmo? Acid Energy, can you please enlighten Aux Pin? Because you bought me this. So, and you know the name of it, and I'm not actually sure, other than cool Sears Towery looking gadget. Um... R18, R19, R32, 18, 19, 32. R18. Eighteen, nineteen, thirty-two. Where's I nineteen? There's a lot of resistors on here. Eighteen, nineteen, thirty-two. What are resistors even for? I'm resisting. Eighteen, nineteen. Oh. There's one that's it is helpful that they're mentioned like they're here. Greetings to Detroit, Knucklebuster. May I try and make Detroit proud with the riffs that this thing makes when it's built. Eighteen, nineteen, thirty-two. Can you see it? Eighteen, nineteen, thirty-two. So probably it's in here somewhere. There. Yeah, Nigel Tedbury. I want a Hakko FX eighty-eight, eight eight eight. Really nice soldering station. Kind of looks like a toy, but you know, that way that like high quality equipment, like a buchla, <laughs> looks like a toy.
cool. Do we solder these? It does say solder them. I tell you what, I am thirsty. I think I do need a drink. Alas, I am not drunk, far from it, despite having had a gin. It was just to steady my hand, officer. Um, I don't know if being actually drunk and attempting to build a module would be a sensible thing to do. But, it would definitely steady my hand, because I do have shaky hands and it does help. I've got some whiskey, single malt, and I've got some uh, Japanese whiskey, which is blended. Nika, um, not from the barrel, which is single, I think, uh, but I've got like Nika Days, which is sort of, uh, it's like a blend, but it's nice. I do like Japanese whiskey. Just this so you can see this bear. Can you see this? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I have actually got the expanders for this in black to match pulses and bolts. And they are good. I am actually, yeah, cut off leads are good for like um, when you build posh things that need like joints soldering. Um, I'm going to get a drink. Bear with. Scotch. <laughs> scotchy, scotchy, scotch. Glenn Livett in this instance. Cheers. To use. Use internet peeps. Thanks for being here. And looking over my shoulder while I make a fool of myself. And occasionally correcting me. Ensuring that this build probably will work. On the whole. So, what did I just do? Three 1K resistors. Two 1.6K resistors. 1 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6. This boring? 1.6, 1.6. 1.6. Well, you choose to be here. 1.6, here they are. Cheers. But yeah, when you're looking for something, say it repeatedly. Apparently it helps. Let's use the cool bender thing. 
two at once. I mean, I think it helps, but we have got a bit of an issue that a lot of these holes aren't really wide enough for these resistors. It should be down here. It literally gives you a little map. You're looking down here for your 1.6s, R27, R28. Twenty-seven. Uh, there's so many resistors. What do you need them all for? Oop. Twenty-seven. R twenty-eight. Resist. Yeah, we do need to resist. Yeah, the whole like vertical placement is kind of necessary, as you see. This will not sit flush. Hold the bending gauge to find the right width. <laughs> well, mm, I'm trying to pull on these. It's just not really working. And then I'm starting to think, does it really matter? Like, can they just be pointing up like that? It's a clearance question, really. Um, How's this all going to go together? That's going to be... Yeah, I don't know if the bending... I think I'm not using the bending tool well. I'm not going to blame the, the bending tool. That's the, the schoolboy error there. Mm. I just need pliers. I think if I did have pliers and I could just pull these through, then it'd be fine. I'm just going to squish them down a bit and pray for the best. It's fine. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Textbook. There are many Turing machines, but this one is mine, so... It's fine. I do have pliers, just not here, like near me. Like I say, I've never had a build that didn't work. So how bad can it be? And yes, I am ensuring that the the main point is that the, the legs are not touching. As in, the parts remain separate. That's the key thing. And that's a mistake I have made in the past. Rusty says, it's all a fraud. He probably doesn't even plug in his own patch cables. Yeah, fun fact is like, this is just someone else's hands and I just do like a voiceover. <laughs> it's like in a, in Labyrinth, if you ever watched Labyrinth with David Bowie, when he does like the sort of the ball like trick, like making the sort of like crystal balls move. There's actually someone's hands around, someone stood behind David Bowie who's like, can do that. And he's just doing it to make it look like he's doing it. And that's just all my videos. That's that's how it works. It's 
27. Oh, God. That could have ended badly. 27 and 28. I did do that right, yeah. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Yep, good. Whoa, big guns sold at ten, two point twos, two point two, two point two. Must be in here because there's such a large quantity required. Yep. I love Labyrinth. It truly is like, these are actually David Bowie's hands, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, am I using this wrong? I wanna get this like, but I can't, if I put these on there, like it won't fit, it won't bend down. That's the closest one that I could bend down. Composition A, have you ever built a Euro rack kit or a kit of any kind? Ooh. I'm making a real dog's dinner of this. Yeah, if I could just like bend these here. Resistor orientation. Do you mean orientating them all the same way so that you could read the colors better? Yeah, no, the hell with that. My trick is that I just read the instructions and make sure that I try to get them in the correct holes. <laughs> so I'm trying to use the little device to get this as tight as possible. I mean, it doesn't really fit there, but it fits on this one more naturally, but I would like it to have a tighter bend so it'd sit flusher. You know what I mean? Like that. Like totally in and happy and straight down, but I wonder if that's tight enough. By hand, he says. One does get a tight bend. Ah, never built a module. Well, yeah, I definitely recommend kits. But if you obviously, if you build other stuff, it's all just soldering. Um, and soldering is like easy as long as you keep your soldering iron clean. And so that's the only tricky bit. And even that's just a knack. All I'm doing is I, I have wire wool, which is, this is better than using a sponge. It just gets it a lot cleaner. Um, and I coat the tip when I put it back in, which you probably don't even need to do, but I do anyway, because um, I have a slightly cheap soldering iron, 2.2, um, so that when it's in there, it's got additional solder to help protect the tip from oxide oxidization. Can't get it flush. Thanks, Chase Dunkley. Good to have you here. Um, occasionally, I attempt to build Eurorack modules on camera. And so far, it's always gone reasonably well. <laughs> Though mistakes were made. Yeah, I think the resistors just are fundamentally 
Generally, they will sit flush, but I think they're just a bit chonker. They are bigger than what he needs, but it's fine. There's enough clearance so that, it, like, there'll be space for the above. And I'm, I'm genuinely not bothered about it looking pretty. I don't build this to sell it. I'm building this to rinse it. So when you see the black Turing machine, it's this one. In future vids, I hope. I mean, it's <laughs> getting ahead of ourselves that this thing will ever work, but, you know. Can't be optimistic, right? If not, I, I'm seeing Tom Whitwell in next weekend, so ask him to fix it. <laughs> I'm sure he'll tell me where to stick my module. <laughs> I think that you shouldn't overheat a part as long as you've got a clean soldering iron. So like the number one rule is soldering iron cleanliness. And if you can do that, then it, you will never have a problem. And the trick with cleanliness is just, I mean, take it out. See, I've got like a little blob on the end that's just sat there. Just so it just, I mean, I don't know if I need to do that. And I've seen people not do that. But I think they've got better soldering irons than mine. So I just do that. Um, and I'm quite often, oop, bend. I'm quite often just like dabbing and cleaping it clean. Louis asks, how is life outside the big smoke? It's good, thank you. Leeds. I'm in Leeds. And I've not, to be honest, not had a huge amount of time to explore it because of that whole health situation thing that's been going on. <laughs> so I sort of moved out of London and then basically moved into the countryside, which I must admit um, was not a bad place to be stuck in my sort of family home before we had this place. Oh, that really balls that up. Um, it was really good because it was... You know, green countryside, perfect electronic music type place where there's really nothing else going on so that all you can do is play with your synthesizers. And that's kind of why, that's partly why I'm into this stuff, was growing up in a place like that, which is to say the middle of sweet FA in the countryside because there was nothing else to do. I couldn't drive, not when I was 16. And in fact, I was a late getting to learn to drive anyway. So it was just like, mm, I guess I'll just play with synthesizers. And now here we are. <laughs> Still playing with synthesizers. Yeah, the flicking the solder off, I've done that a little bit, but um, that would be bad for the... <laughs> Eight mini pro over here and all my other equipment that's on this desk and my phone would not enjoy having hot solder blasted onto it. Thank you, Blythen. Blythen? F P P F P V. It is it is really good to help. It's sort of weird, just like doing stuff and putting it out and then complete strangers <laughs> watching things and being like, Oh, this is actually really cool and um, yeah, it's mad, like the, the glory of YouTube, you can just put stuff out and people will find it. Well, you have to keep working at it for years and years and years and years and years. And years. <laughs> Learn a unique set of skills that is learning how to sort of make videos and present, oh bugger, present things. It's a skill in and of itself. <laughs> I've never struggled with this, like, the whole, like, everyone's like, oh, you need to get leaded solder. Maybe, like, maybe I don't know what I'm, well, I clearly don't know what I'm missing, but I've, I've never found it to be a problem. Like, it's fine. 
I mean, remain to be seen, you can watch me solder this. So if I might adjust this, just so you can slightly better see. Whoop, whoop. Using manual lenses, so it's actually it's quite close focus on this. This is a Olympus, a vintage Olympus lens from like the nineties or the eighties, but it focuses fairly close. But I've also got the aperture on f sixteen, but because I'm using a Sony A seven S, I've got it on like ISO sort of eight thousand or something ludicrous, and it still looks fine. That Sony A seven S is great. I also have this Black Magic. Cinema camera being loaned by Blackmagic, which is awesome. Different, obviously. Um, yeah, my cameras. I wish that I could, like, treat my synthesizers like I treat cameras, which is to say that I've got a really prag... What's the word? Not pragmatic, but sort of very... Um, why is beeping? It's midnight. Why is my watch beeping? <laughs> what happens at midnight? Um, but for me, cameras are tools, you know? And it's not about, you know, there are certain things that you need, but a camera doesn't make a good video. Like, it, it could not be more obvious that that is just totally nothing to do with it. Yet somehow that logic cannot be, does not translate over to music equipment, uh, even though it really should. Um, good equipment is nice, but does not make a good tune. Why do I understand that for cameras, but not music gear? Oh my God, what's going on? Yeah, beep beep bedtime. I think if I don't finish in five minutes, I will burn my pinky. Oh, shit. There you go. <laughs> because the more tired I get, the more likely I am to solder my flesh to this board. Melted flesh sounds like a module. Don't know who would make that. Yeah, this is kind of chaos, isn't it? Do that again. Do you know what? I think we need some courtesy snips here. Courtesy snip CP. I mean, these are fine, but we'll just get rid of them. Which ones have I soldered? God.
Yeah, I mean, definitely, like, with the good gear thing, it certainly has helped a lot, like, having the A7S unequivocally, like the Blackmagic Black Magic stuff, too. Giving yourself latitude, like, having latitude to sort of sculpt to look is really helpful, and having good low light capability is really helpful, especially in gloomy studios. I mean, it's not to say lights aren't important, because they are, but it helps you get the most out of less for me like the big thing with the a7s was it, in fact it's full frame because it being full frame meant that i could use vintage lenses and get the whole like frame out of them and that helped with um doing stuff close up like it made it cheaper lens wise if that makes sense and I could have the camera closer. Boring practicalities, but useful. Sorry, I'm in the way. Yeah, so like the... I have like little... Basically, a K and F concept like lens adapters, that's the good thing is once you've bought like a full frame camera, um, most of them, oh my God, that's like the worst I've ever done. Um, you can basically pretty much fit any lens to them. And there's lots of like 15 pound adapters that you can get on Amazon that are just mechanical connectors. They're all manual as they should be. Because you don't need auto-focusing lenses for doing video, uh, unless you're like a vlogger, which I am not. Um, so, um, point being is you can basically fit any lens that you happen to have. And so you could buy like, I've got like Sony to Olympus, Sony to Nikon, Sony to Minolta. And I've got like Olympus, Nikon, Minolta lenses, like vintage ones that I've just picked up. I've got a Canon one as well somewhere. Um, so you can kind of, you can build up this family of vintage lenses and the lenses are relatively cheap. Um, so I've got like 28s, uh, 28s, 35s, 50s. This is a 50th. No, this is 28. Um, you know, and it's just like, boom, happy days. Um, and they look, yeah, they look good. I mean, they're not like amazing lenses but having amazing lenses does not make a channel successful like lighting is more important than lenses and sound is more important than lighting so content is king but it is nice to have and the practicalities of just fitting it all in <laughs> three at once Da, da, da. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Fong. Basically, most of these, there's, they will work with um, pretty much any lens. I've got like, um, like loads, of, yeah, a bunch of old lenses. Um, hmm. Solder the single 3.3K. 3.3, 3.3 is here. Yeah, the GH4 is awesome, but because it's a APS-C, I mean, I guess whatever works. It's just, for me, it's been really helpful that um, 
I already had a bunch of these lenses. Actually, I did have a GH2 when I did like the Metropolis video. That's done on a GH2 with the like hack. Um, is this three point three? I guess so. If there's just one of it, um, let's just put it in. What could possibly go wrong? Um, <laughs> sorry, orange. I know that it's uh, aesthetic crimes, but I'm not too worried about it. I think you can get like an A7. You should be able to get like the A7 I've got for like, well, I'm not sure what your base, but here, like, well, I, I paid like 800 quid for it, which was a lot for a camera, but also not compared to what it used to cost. Um, and that was a few years ago. So, um, you know, I think it's probably 500 quid, something like that, which for your kind of primary workhorse is pretty decent. I know it's upsetting that the resistors don't. They're just not going in the whole way. Sorry. I don't bother cleaning flux afterwards, but you can get flux cleaner, can't you? Or like, um, is it isopropyl alcohol? And you're just supposed to like rub the thing down, as it were. Job, I definitely understand prioritizing the synthesizer budget. The one thing that I, I really do need is the 4K overhead for doing videos. Does that, That's one of those things where it's like, ooh, careful. Um, where you do just need a 4K camera because the ability to reframe it's like just a huge help and the crispness. I'm looking at these to make sure they're all separate. I can't focus in that short on this. Yeah, 4K for cropping in is like a huge thing. Like it really like actually makes your videos better and just easier to read. More professional. Five point one K. Menus on synths can be a problem though for doing videos where you get um, weird refresh rates. You must have had that like this. Uh, like that's that's not like that in real life. It's just uh, it's I probably can change this. I would have to change the shutter speed, like shutter angle, and it is literally angle on the the cinema camera, which is rather than shutter speed because it's professional. Um, I could probably make that better. Single five point one into. R26, which is somewhere in this smorgasbord. Oh. R26. There. So many resistors. I mean, like... Yeah, uh, Job, you do literally make it 180 on the cinema cameras. Shutter angle, they're very professional. <laughs> um, I 
could um, <laughs> fly in audio snippets um, while I do literally have a Rodecaster Pro, which is just, I believe the kids say clutch <laughs> for doing such things. Night night, self. Um. thing up here. Excuse me, one sec. Ace. Ace. <laughs> uh, so let's go back. Do I have to save that? Or is it? Ace. Now I've got that on a pad. <laughs> so I can just go, hey, is that Ace? It's Ace. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm having fun. How are you? <laughs> Um, well, uh, that's the Roadcaster Pro, uh, which is really great if you make podcasts and live streams. Anyone else? No? Just me? Uh... Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, what did I just do? The 5.1 sold the two um, 15k resistors and then four remaining 10k. Speaking of whiskey, hi. Two fifteen K. Fifteen K. Fifteen K. Nope. And the four remaining ten K. That's got to be these ones in here. That's why it's telling me to do these at the same time. That bag is done. I mean, you can get quite a straight bend, but I like using the gadget too. Sometimes we go organic. Sometimes uh, we don't. <laughs> uh. R2, and, oh, my favorite resistor location, R9. Bit of a Detroit thing, gag for you there. No, 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 wait, wait. Uh, it was um, R9 by uh, Cybertron. Okay. <laughs> Sync step to the beat R9. Um, I would play that. Where would it not get me struck? Deeply struck. I mean, I don't. That's the thing. I would play it and we just give away the, you know, what enormous revenue there will be from the views on this video. But um, I mean, one tries to bend close to the resistor body, but there is R9. I think, yeah. R9. I can play music through the, the podcaster, actually, or roadcaster, I should say. Um, I'd have to play my own music. R2. I don't really have any prepared 
R2 is here. R2. Haha. <laughs> I don't know if I can play, can I play music? No. It's like, can I put on like someone's band camp and then play it through here and then have it come through into the video? Maybe. Hmm, not sure though. If that's a USB mix minus thing. Um. It's quite a big build, isn't it? Yeah, Mr. Fung is a Big, long, <laughs> it's peaceful in here. You mean it's quiet? In a strange corner of the internet. Alive, the live build. Surely other people live build or live stream their build. The YouTube video that talks back. Leave a comment, Lancer. I don't know, ASMR, it's just like not, I don't really get it. Well, I get it, but sort of, don't know. I wouldn't watch it. There is that thing of like amplified whispering. You know, the whole, um, Skittles, taste the rainbow. Like, I, like makes my skin crawl. I mean, it didn't when I just did it to myself, but um, it's very annoying. So I can't get on with board with ASMR. Um, <laughs> uh, do you like thinner solder better? Or would you use thicker if you had some left? Um, there is a, yeah. Like, it depends what you're soldering. But obviously for um, surface mount, it really is better to use thinner solder. Like it just definitely makes it easier. Otherwise you've got big blobs. Um, but on stuff like this, um, this is 0 0.8, I think we worked out. Yeah, it's 0 0.8, which is all right. I was using um, Chonker 1 uh, one mil, Yeah, 1 millimeter, And that works well as well. But it is easy to go a bit overboard. 0 0.8 is a good, that's a sort of good, happy medium. What were those? <laughs> 4 10Ks. R12. Uh, R12. <laughs> oh yeah, that is funny that the comment about the fact that if this was a piece of Arduino code, it would be like next to nothing. And it's all just bits, actual bits that actually do things. Um, uh, what was it? R12. Yep. I mean, if this works, it's living proof that anyone can build a Eurorack module. Because all I'm doing is following instructions. I don't know what I'm doing. Literally just putting the bits in where I'm told it's Lego. That's what it is. Just Lego. But a bit more Bernie. <laughs> Bernie Lego. Hey, it's Bernie Lego here. R23. Yep. R23, R30, and R35. 
R35. Well, that one sat flush, reasonably flush. And R30. Where's R30? Uh, it's there. Barbecue Lego. I like that. <clears throat> Sync step to the beat R9. Well, it's half midnight. My wife's still out. Come out for drinks. Hence me attending to my crying babe. Big night. Three ornament and crimes. What um I I have actually got three ornament and crimes <laughs> when I think about it. Um But what do you use them all for? I guess you use them for like one for envelopes, one for cheering type duties and um Others, but what, well, yeah, what do you use three for? Should I be getting into using multiples? I don't really understand. That's the problem is it's such a hard module to learn because it doesn't really have very fun instructions. And like the names of things don't help you understand what they are. I mean, although the fact that it has a Harrington 1200, which is a uh, look around you joke, is that is quite good, but it doesn't tell me what it is. Yeah, there's the one that's got like this mode with Euclidean rhythms and, um, but also makes like envelopes, which is just delightful. Yeah, I need, I like, I need to try the hemispheres thing, but I need to sort of, I need like a clear evening where I can kind of work out how the bloody hell to get it working. Dun, 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 dun. He's building a Turing machine, a statement. I just think something everyone should, you need as many as you can get. Solder the single 68K, 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 68K. Nope. 68K, 68K, 68K. There she is. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't know if you're asking me this acid energy, but I'll answer and other people can chip in. But I mean, like, the whole thing of, I mean, multifunction modules, they are really good. It's just, um, it's just remembering how to use them isn't fun, potentially. Um, and so, I don't know. One thing with the ornament of crime, which I'm sure people can try and correct me, is isn't it right that the ornament of crime does not remember its state? You have to set it up every time you power it up. Um, but any module that... Yeah, you need a reference guide to just use. It's not without its own problems. But there's also probably benefits because it will do so much. So it's it's a trade-off that you have to work with. But there's been a lot of times when I'm like, oh, God, I wish I had that. 
I wish I had a module that did that and then I realized, oh yeah, I've got a disk thing, so I actually do. And that is very, very cool. So it's sort of, it's just a compromise. Ideally, everything would be single function. It would. It is better, but it isn't practical financially. Oh, you can save the OC. I just don't know how to do it. That's the thing. It's just not good documentation. And it really hurts because you're just like, Good documentation can hopefully yeah unlock potential oh fuck what am i doing here single 51k didn't i do that uh is it this one i just did the single 68k didn't i This is why they say don't do this tired. <laughs> I disobeyed the first rule of Tom Whitwell. The Whitwell's law. Don't do it tired. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Can you remember the button combinations for things? I am. Um, I sold Renee and bought a Metropolis. And that's when I made the video about Metropolis because I can never remember the combinations for Renee. Great module and really is like it, still unique and amazing. But I can't remember how to make it do things without the manual. And that's just annoying. I think the thing with the disk thing is like you need a module that's got like a pull out manual, like on a TX81Z. If you ever missed with one of those, it had a pull out on the underside of the one new unit, it's a pull out thing. You need like a pull out like manual. Is this definitely the 51K? I think it is. But I'm very much assuming so. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> yes, I am not colorblind, but um, my color vision isn't helping me either, so. many resistors look at that absolute hodgepodge uh oh, it's ugly isn't it but i don't know it also looks quite organic um
Hmm. I can't remember where I was. <laughs> Four remaining 100k, yes. My wife's back from the pub. Everyone say hello. <laughs> she can't hear you, unfortunately. I don't think she's willing to get on the mic. But we can ask. Bear with me. I'm not on mute. You're not. I am. Hello? She stood in the doorway drinking. <laughs> Dangerous. Water. Yes. Very sensible. How long is this going to take? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> the instructions... It doesn't uh, look like you've done anything. How long <laughs> have we been doing this for? <laughs> uh, about three solid hours, three and a half hours. Um, oh, there is some things on it. Yeah, come on, look at that. Oh, you've done that. Well done. Yeah, I did it all that. Well, look, I did it. I did it. I just it. thought you'd done this one. I was wondering what was going on. No, no, that, I mean, that wouldn't be good progress for three and a half hours. <laughs> but I have done that as well. Which looks professional, don't you think? Greetings from the internet, says everyone. Hi, internet. Brian Brill says, thank you for sharing Alex with us. Aww. Thanks. I'm not. Thanks for sharing him with me. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, progress, right? It remains to be seen how far progress can be. <laughs> I think she's, she's gone. She's gone. She's away. And she's away. Too bad. Um, R10, R11. I do need to actually get this right. Oi. Oi. Where the hell is R10? Oh, God. Don't do it tired. R10. I mean, it would be fun to get Mrs. Melodies on the show, but I think she does not approve of all of this synthesis. <laughs> this is long suffering, having to coexist with my machines. R10, R11. We don't have a very big house, and I have got a lot of synthesizers. <laughs> My son, however, definitely likes the synthesizers because he comes in and puts on my headphones and plays. R22. <laughs> I feel like there's no way that he cannot be interested in synthesizers <laughs> when... <laughs> when he's obviously going to be a folk musician. <laughs> well, there is that possibility. But there is no acoustic guitar in this house, so... Not that I'm... Well, there I mean, is one at his granddad's. Yeah, that is true. And I mean, I would buy him one immediately if he was interested. But I would also get him some weird effects pedals. <laughs> Be like, and what of these, Francis? No, there Daddy. Are effects pedals in here. I have got quite a few effects yes, pedals. So, I mean, it is an option. Oh, 
R20. Where's R29? Can you see it? R29. Yes, somewhere. It's down here somewhere. Oh, for the... Oh, for, forget it. Come on. R31. Just below the transistor. <gasps> you got it. You got it. Thank you. My God, this is just so useful having, <laughs> having complete strangers <laughs> to see me right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and you're back in the room. That's a bingo. Ow, 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 ow. Here's full hive mind. Ah, uh -huh. good old super booth. And I will be at the next super booth. Soup, soup, uh, booth. I will be at the next super booth, all being well. COVID permitting. This is the A7. Well, the thing is, I can be quite single-minded when I set my mind to something. Um, yeah, come and say hello, Job, if you see me. I will do the same. Um, yeah. I don't know, when you get into the like rhythm of doing something, then I mean, it's the classic making music late into the night. Um, of course, it remains to be seen if this continuation will lead to a broken module and there is quite a lot of stuff. I will stop if I can't, if I think I'm going to just break the thing by continuing. Super booze. Can't wait. Can't send me resistors. Um. Oh my God, more. 470K resistors, 470, 470, 470. Full 70, full 70K. Whoa, 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 what have I done with them? Whoa, 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 what have I done? Oh, there we go. That'll be them. I oh, know. Is it going to work? <laughs> You're winning, son. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the... That is the cinema camera. Which, it's not really a fair fight because the cinema camera needs, you know, it shoots flat and can be pushed in almost any direction. And I only have like a cheapy Panasonic lens on here. Nothing particularly special. Whereas the A7 I've got. Um, I have my Olympus, which is also not very special. It's just an old, old lens. <laughs> full 70, full 70k. Right. I lived in London for many years. 
That's it. Oh, I lived in Whitechapel. Oh, I lived in up north, east, west, never south. Visited south, but never lived south. Full 70k. All of the flat whites and all that stuff down there now. <laughs> Go down there and have that. Lovely. Um, <laughs> full 70k. <laughs> Oh, you should have come and interrupted us, Nigel. And bowling into the centre of us. Um, because the problem with Superbooth is that there's a point where you're just like, there's never a good moment. And people come and go, although you do see, it depends what people are doing, but. Um, oop. Like I met um, Nobs for the first time at Superbooth, but he just sort of came up to me and was like, it's Nobs. And I was like, oh, because he didn't have a face. <laughs> he was just hands. Words. You're like, oh my God. Um, what, I looked at this, but it didn't go in. R31. There. Of course, Nobs is actually very handsome. Easy to recognise when you know when you know him. You can all admire my beard. Give me points. Knocks out of ten for fullness, thickness, and groom grooming quality. Yeah, I am just hands. Floating down a corridor. I did have a very funny experience once where I was doing, working at a show, trade show, like synthy event thing, as I've done in the past. And um, I was showing someone like a Moog synth. I was chatting about it. I was like, oh, yeah, it does this, this, this. And he was like looking down at the synth. And he just kind of looked up at me and just was like, Sorry, do you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> I was like, yes. He's like, oh yeah, it was just when I was looking at your hands and hearing your voice, I suddenly recognised you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that makes sense. You wouldn't if they just saw me coming down the street. God, my long resistance is, is finally over. Sod of the remaining. <laughs> yeah, I am hand famous. That is playing on the Poly 61 thing. I have sold some modules where I'm like, oh, and uh, here's a video of, so you can see what the module does. P.S. This video features the exact module that you will be buying. <laughs> there you go. Talk about bespoke. Yeah, when you take off the paper, you feel like you've committed, don't you? You're like, oh, this is it. This is going in, or I've lost it, and we're screwed. I hope you uh, ask for more money as a result. You know who I am. <laughs> My DNA costs extra. <laughs> I 
late night Lego. Late night human flash Lego. <laughs> Adding my own special stuff to this module. By soldering my body parts to it. <laughs> Gosh, I hope I was supposed to solder this in and on that side. <laughs> because I've just gone for it. <laughs> Let's just check that, shall we? Yes, it is supposed to be on this side. Solder. Um, do you know what I need? Do you know what I need? Have we been here for like five hours? Oh my God. I am quite sort of, yeah, I don't know, is that normal? I don't know, I just sort of like, when you get stuck into it, I really notice the time. God. I suppose I've done this before, like, I'm not like, not like the first thing I've built, but... I don't think I'm unique in that. Everyone, you know, when you get into something, you just want to sort of, just get into it, don't you? He says, screwing up this royally. Uh, in answer to your question, Kev, DivKid is in Bradford. Bradford. So, yes, he's very close to me. Weird, actually, that you've got me and him quite close to each other. Well, maybe not that weird. I don't know. But it's just sort of fairly, like, moderately, prol <laughs> moderately prolific modular YouTubers, but we're sort of quite close to each other. And hopefully I'll try and catch up with him soon. I would like to go for a beer. In Leeds or Bradford or Keithley. To the Wishbone Brewery, which um, is a very fine place. But yeah, sort of two... I'm actually from North Yorkshire rather than West Yorkshire. But my weird voice is based on the fact that I spent way too long in London. And I think some of that, like, Londoniness has kind of, like, rubbed off on me. Um, oh, the fumes are fine. Is it? Is that bad? I'm in a room that has doors and stuff. The fruit the fumes are so delicious. I don't want to miss out on them, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm sat here for five solid hours. I have actually got FFP2 masks. Um, find the two remaining capacitors. Do I have the capacity to do that? Not in a bit of paper. And what about these, friend? Do these count? It should be one N ones marked. One O two. Where's that? There we go. Does that say 102? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Quite useful, that, isn't it? <laughs> Murder capital of Yorkshire, Keithley. That's nice, dear. Is it? Yeesh. I mean, there was the Yorkshire Ripper in... In Leeds. Is 
So what was it? C one in C seventeen. That reminds me, there's R2, there's R9, but my favourite um, capacitor location is C16 because it makes me think of um, the, the Philip Rees C16, which I have somewhere. Where is it? Which I jokingly refer to as the C6 Steve. <laughs> Philip, Philip Rees is C6 Steve. Uh, it's very niche, very niche. Yeah. Um, not funny thing that I think in my mind. Whatever happened to Philip Rees? Just, I guess, MIDI devices. There was like the computer just kept, became a thing. and But, you know, you still need knobby control. I don't know why he didn't sort of... What is going on? Are, you, are we dissing leads in the chat? You need to watch yourself. Leeds will have you. <laughs> Composition A, I like your backhanded compliment. If this works, there's <laughs> if this clown can achieve this, there's definitely I can do a better job. <laughs> no question. And that is, if there's one good thing that comes of this, it will be that. Um, ah, yes. Yes, well, well, you should hear me say bath, Kev, and glass. Oh, my God, it's capacitor time. I guess it's these ones, isn't it? Single ten N. Single ten N. Is it this one? Yeah, look at that. Royalty. It's got its own little bag. All right for you, mate. I like the way they've done this though. They've kept everything separate so that the quantities make it really easy to find the right things. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> you get me, bro. Do you get me, bro? Get me, bro. Single ten <laughs> into C nine ten N. You put that. This one goes in. Oh no. Yep. Yeah. Uh, C nine. Bro. Bro, where's C nine? Here. Yeah. Yeah, you just put all the bits in the little holes and you solder them in and that's it. There are really good videos that explain um, how to solder, like, you know, the, like the physical act of soldering, which is very simple. Yeah, it's fun building stuff. It's relaxing. It's just like something to do. We put on music, podcasts, other things. And just sort of slowly plug away at it. Ideally have some of it set up where it's not in front of your computer where the onus is you could kind of do with getting all the stuff out of the way. Um, so that you can leave it set up and you don't have to just plow through when you're feeling quite tired and probably going to mess it up. That remains to be seen. Um, before any of these capacitors, I'm getting more whiskey. Would you like a drink? I'll get you one. Bear with me.
Well, because it's you, I got you a Lagavulin. Yeah. The best. <laughs> oh, my God, that's so delicious. <laughs> It's like drinking a fire, but like a sort of PT, PT fire. Oh, wow. What an amazing liquid. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I feel like a second wind coming on. <laughs> uh, sounds X-rated. <laughs> I'm very lonely. <laughs> I've been here too long. <laughs> oh, wow. I think I've gone a bit mad. Oh, wait, well, it's funny. It's not. I'm not sure why I'm laughing. Come on, pull it together. But, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. I know what I'm doing. Um, I am reading these, by the way, Chris. And thank you. What did you buy? Ooh, I'd like some chili and wine. Nice. Eek. Eek. Oof. I need to go to a spin class. Oh, wow. You got the mode starter trio. That is a hell of a way to start. And it is a good one. I would get some effects if you've not already. I'm sure you have. Um, delay and reverb. But you can't go far wrong. That and a drum machine. But yeah, some effects and a mixer. Well, actually, you get a mixer, don't you? But um, Yes, Mr. Fong, if you could please be my eyes to ensure that there's nothing horrifically wrong that I'm doing, because that is very possible. Yeah, you definitely want some effects, like it is transformative with those things. Um, delay and reverb. Stereo delay on the DFAM. Reverb on the subharmonicon. Uh, that's kind of all you need. Um, and a drum machine, like an actual drum machine. Get a Roland TR8 and you have all you need to have a lot of fun. Um, So C7. C14. Whoop. I think it's 100 end. C14. Yeah, okay, 100 end. The tricky thing about... Um, the Moog Trinity is depends is like you need to build everything around the subharmonicon. I would say, like if you did something on the Mother Thirty Two and tried to make the subharmonicon fit that, you would have a real time. Whereas getting, um, yeah, the other way round, like make the Mother fit the subharmonicon is a better way of doing things. Um, and the thing that I did, and actually, if you go on like the Moog YouTube, on that actual YouTube, there's a live stream I did where I played with the Trinity and a 808, like the little 808 module. Um, and I used a Turing machine to control the Mother 32. Because if you get the Mother 32's um, firmware update, it lets you, I think, CV address the um, location. Is that right? 
Um, and that is such a good trick because then you can basically program in pitches into the sequence so that are good and work. And then you can use something else to CV address them. Actually, I think I use the DFAM. I use like the DFAM thing. Anyway, if you find that video, there's, I found a sort of quite a good way of working it that keeps it all live. And it also doesn't mean that you need to ro reprogram the mother sequence live, which is, I actually quite enjoy, but it is, it's an acquired taste. And it's not that hard. You just need to RTFM because the manual does explain it. C8, 100N, yes. Um, but the key is reverb and delay. Like without them, like it really is like, yeah, they're important. I have never circuit bent a vintage synth, although I have, um, I have circuit bent a Yamaha VSS 200. Um, never, I've never circuit bent anything with mains power because <laughs> uh, the stakes are high. <laughs> I mean, you've seen how I build modules. Imagine what what could happen. C16. C6, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah. Stereo, basically stereo ping pong delay on the DFAM that is clocked is just delightful. It's all about the stereo delay. Um... But I mean, there are people who circuit bend, um, like, uh, what was it the one that I was looking at? Uh, 707, isn't it? Circuit bend 707 is a thing, isn't it? Um, what are the other ones? Um, I've got, I actually, ah, ah, no, I've actually got a kit would be the wrong term, but I've got a chip, I think a chip and like a, a pot from circuitbenders.co.uk. That is a circuit, it's like a clocking mod for the Alesis MIDI Verb. The, uh, what have I got? I've got three of them. I bought on eBay. I found someone selling three, like uh, one of those. Not. It's not the MIDI Verb 2. It's the like, it's the half rack one, or it's a third rack because I've got a one U rack plate that's got three of them in it. And it's like the sort of, it's not the MIDI verb two, and it's not the MIDI verb one. It's like the micro verb, I think. And basically there's a clock mod and it like, it, it makes them go all sludgy and crazy and, and re-clocks the thing that runs them. Um, and so that's technically circuit bending. Um, so I will be doing that at some point when I, it's in storage at the moment. As mentioned, I could do with a studio space not be in this room which is a tbc project yeah microverb not a quadroverb but i do have one here that's a quadroverb <laughs> just hit it for you uh hopefully you could tell that was the sound of a quadroverb being struck but um i don't think oh well i don't know if circuit bending that would do anything good but it is kind of like re-clocking or like the timing chip that's in them, like basically re-clocking it is a thing. But yeah, those little, little microverbs are good. I like them. Uh, it was actually, I don't know who to blame for that, and that is Valhalla DSP, because when I did a podcast with him, he was talking about them. And I was like, oh, I think I might just get one. And then there were like three on eBay and that like unit... So I was like, oh, sorry, I'm going to get it. It was like 80 quid for three, which was kind of awesome. Um, mm. I haven't like, I need to dig into the subharmonicon in terms of like what we can learn from it. 
definitely i've done a bit of that with the dfam it's worth looking at the block diagram and like teaching yourself about what they've actually conceived and yeah quantizing it will help <laughs> mech bag Um, the scene that probably wants to go there, doesn't it? Uh, yep. It is ten past one in the morning. What point does a person reasonably say that I should probably stop attempting to build the URAC module? that may or may not work. I blame the enablers for like watching me do it. <laughs> I've not done a very good job. I don't know when I woke up. <laughs> I'm so tired, I can't even think. Oh, that's not straight. Not at all. But is it straight enough? The calibration rock and roll. You're enabling the creation of a Jerry machine, not a destruction. Something that will remain to be seen. Oh. Um. <clears throat> Make sure it is flush with the surface of the PCB. I mean, I know why they're saying that, and that's because it has to be reached through this little hole here, doesn't it? EG, you know, you need to be able to reach into that. And I think you can, definitely. Next, identify the transistor. Use the codes, Luke. Um, don't mix it up with something, it said. Something like that. Don't mix it up with something. I've got very few bags left, so I feel like we're getting to the denouement of this uh, affair, sordid, constructive affair. That's an empty bag. Another bag done. Yes, Philip Wilson. In the words of Ben Div Kid, it'd be right. Um, <laughs> ask it for ID. You got 20p for a bus fare, mate. Can you read those? Because I can't. Well, I've got a better quality version of this than you. Uh, 3904. That says 3904 on it. Boom. We're in. No. 
No, ensure the flat face and the component. Yeah, yeah, I know about that. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? 3904. Go on, get an old mate. Is that actually 3904? It does say that. Oh. How high is, how high can this be, metaphorically speaking, and still be appropriate? <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. Except to say... Just like, how much clearance do you have? Surely a fair bit. You need to bend the middle lead of the component backwards to achieve this. For it to go through the center hole. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I know about that. Orientation is vital. Again, I wish I had pliers. Trying to like pull it through cack handedly. That's fine. If that's not fine, then I'll blame Tom Whitwell. I'll go around to his house and ask for my money back. I know where he lives. Been there. So I will. I think the thing, well, it's just what I worry about is the orientation, I, not the orientation, the um, height, just to make sure there's enough, it's not butting up on the underside of the um, panel. You should definitely come to the booth then, Robot Dog. <laughs> I would I would welcome this. And yeah, I definitely recommend Super Booth. Like unequivocally. It's like a festival, but it's like synthesizers. It's brilliant. Um Identify the transistor. Well I guess it's this by Hook or by Crook. How does one identify this TL431? Do we identify it based on the fact that it's the only matey looking thing left? Oh, forget it. Thank you. Um, do we see a likely hole? I think it's likely there's that hole. <laughs> What's that, Herwood? We should clip it before we put it in. I don't want to do too much fiddling. Yeah, I think it is, the whole COVID thing is a slight concern based on the fact that um, COVID itself does not seem to be terribly bothered by the fact that we're all kind of over it and we'd like it to go away. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, hopefully it it will go away. Well, it will. We'll deal with it. We definitely still have COVID here. I know quite a few people who've got it. <laughs> um, so, um, in fact, yeah, I know lots of people who've got it or had it or have got it right now. Um, I've managed to avoid it, but I've come very close. I've been in the room with people who've got it several times <laughs> and not got it. I don't know, maybe I've. But I'm not superhuman, so we'll see. But, you know, not getting the vax. I'm not going to do that. No, 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 don't worry. I've got the vax. So that's the thing, but doesn't mean you won't get it. Okay, I plugged in the little black box. Oh, and now these film boxes. These little doofs. God, it takes ages, doesn't it? How do Behringer do it? <laughs> there must be a very efficient person that solders their gears. The gears. <laughs> I do believe Barringer does do it with machines, yes. Are you seriously telling me that Uli doesn't build them all himself? Everything is a lie. He really is going after the Volkers. Learn a slightly different way. Why have one Volker keys when you can have, like, three or four of them. <laughs> it continues. Uh, so, solder the single pico farad madufa matufa. Um, what is that? There's got to be a loosey goosey little friend somewhere here. Where are you, my friend? Is there just like a another one of those solo bags that's just got yeah yeah here it is.
I love Lager Berlin. Flip the PCB over. That's important because it would be annoying if you did it on the wrong side. And apply the hedgehogs. Let's hope I don't melt a power header on this. I did. A, I melted a MIDI connector on a Erica synth module that I built once. And so like, like pins poke out a little bit, but it still works. How many of these am I looking for? Oh, look, there's one there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I guess that goes there. It go here. And that, it go there. Right? Am I doing this the right way round? Yes. Yes, I am. But it's an important question. And it needs to be asked. Can I state for the record that, that whoever mentioned earlier that there's someone that sells built Turing machines for £127, that that person is an idiot and has no value for their own time. Right. It, it takes time. Right. There's, that is not a good, like, you can't work for like 30 quid for like five hours. Unless your rent is free and food is free and heating and lighting is, I suppose it is free, but only during the daytime. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they're just really nice. <laughs> maybe they just really like, like, I like the Turing machine more than I do. And they're just like, I don't know, man, I just want, I just want the whole world to have a Turing machine. Would that be so bad? I'm happy to work for free if it means we can have more of these things. A world with more clocked, loopable voltages. It's a world I want to live in. So I work for free and... Actually, I'm an eccentric billionaire. <laughs> it's just how I spend my time. It's Yuli. My name is Yuli Berenger. I'm an eccentric billionaire, and that's why I make container loads of small pieces of equipment to sell. Oh, come on. Oh, going well.
Now, um, this is the bit where I'm like, oh, I'm on camera. Camera number one, camera number two. This is the bit where we look at the solder, like, did I solder all of the joints? They're not terribly well done. They're a bit blobby, as you can see. But then so is my original Turing machine and it works fine. So that, that is a real crime, that one. Don't judge me, internet. No one will see it, right? Mm, that just fell, <laughs> fell off. And then did I get... <laughs> nope. Do you see it? That one didn't solder it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we check our work. Did I miss a resistor? Oh God, it wouldn't be the first time. Where did you see it? The exhaust fan is my lungs. Have I missed one? I don't think so. Although it is quite possible. No, there's a diode in there. Where? Where, robot dog? I don't think I've missed one. Yeah. Whew. But a, an important thing to check because there can be no guarantees that I haven't cocked it up. None. None are offered. Oh, there's complicated, difficult steps now switches, mechanical things. Bim. Into the mech bag. I do wonder if, uh, how much more, how much more are we looking? What kind of a barrel am I staring down here? So we've got switches and business. They all have to go in. Annoying LEDs. They have to be dropped in. You have to tape the thing and then let them fall into place so that they're flush so you don't have a broken teeth sort of vibe to your, <laughs> to your machine. Pan of burnt chips. Double check all your solder joints. 45. Push it together, plug it in. Hmm. Let's continue until I turn into a sort of gloopy mess and break it. Now, the person who did a Decker's Dream as their first build is my hero. But yeah, no. I've been here for like five and a half hours. What the fuck? God. Rawr. Hmm, which way around does that go? Should, I mean, is it actually time for me to put that in? Identify them. Okay. Now, remove washers and your nuts. Get your nuts off the big switch. They are. Yes, they are. Promise. Washers. There's some washers in there that I think belong with this. Right, we'll try to solder on. Soldier on. There's some like um, 
They're leasing here. Premium. Spared no expense. You know it's a good kit when you get some Lurleys. Bloody love Lurleys. Duck, 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 right. Lock. Oh look, there is a little thing on there. Loofer. Well, I'm thoroughly confused about this. So there's a nut and there's a washer thing. Remove all the washers, use only one nut, discard the rest. You're a nut. Okay. I consider these ones discarded down here. Um, if your pots have the small anti-rotation tag on them, break them off first. And they do, so they do. That little thing that's like poking down, I think. How does one break them off first, sir? I mean, I assume that's what I'm supposed to do is like just break that. Gosh, I wish I had a pair of pliers. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> I guess I'll just use my very over-specified snips. I mean, would would we consider that? I'm sure, that'd be fine. So, position the parts, but do not solder yet. They've written that in bold and in red, so I think I probably should listen to what they say. Now, can this go in any direction? Because that feels like a nonsensible thing to do. Can it go in any direction? I actually have a Leatherman, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> cool story, bro. Oh. Boom. Seated. Be doing a lot of that eventually. I assume that's right. I mean, it doesn't specify an orientation and it looks like it could go either way. Alpha pot. Spread no expense. Um, does this have an orientation? Just jam it on and then should be asked why, why am I still doing this why have I not gone to bed I mean it's nearly two o'clock in the morning which is just like it's not it's not ideal when you have a family and a little one who'll probably be up at 5 30 I mean it's a disaster <laughs> is what it is Come on. Yes. Do I need to take the nuts off? I 
These little doofers. The longer end of the LED must go on the side with a plus. The longer end must go on the side with a plus, which is that side. Leon, I actually have got a vice grip to my right. But yeah, I'm just sort of certain things. Yeah, rainbow LEDs would be cool, wouldn't it? Alas. Mm. Alas, poor Yorick. Um was not to be. Okay. So this is like super pro tip from the manual. I didn't know about this. Is let's use this masking tape. Why out? Whoop, 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 whoop. <clears throat> and stick it over here. We can do that. Go with that, and then also here, and also here for these are where there are LEDs, and then. Um, position the panel onto the PCB, making sure the jackpots and everything is aligned. I remember this. And then, really, I am going to have to undo these. This is fun, isn't it?
Somewhere I've got a nut tight now. <laughs> Which is not a phrase I can say very often, but I do. Do we seem to be missing something? Because, I don't know about you, but there's definitely something missing. Oh, and that's why you shouldn't do this when you're tired. Because I missed it. You're still with me, Paul. You're still watching. <laughs> oh, a little for Oop. Thank you. So what I did wrong was that I neglected to recall that there are in fact other controls which need to be some would say have an important role in allowing you to control the Turing machine. Those are thus. Which is which? Oh, scale, of course, is the trimmer. Come on. <coughs> I definitely should be in bed. I should have been in bed like many, many hours ago. But sheer bloody mindedness, I kind of joie de vivre, combined with the egging on of my invisible compatriots here. <laughs> that would be you. <laughs> That's made me push forward. Ill-advised, perhaps? Reckless? Definitely. But, you know, fortune favours the brave, and I just don't want to push this too hard. <laughs> if I have definitely, if I literally have put you to sleep, it's definitely time to go to bed. Night night, and thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to see if I can get these in the hole. Oh, good grief. I'm going to bend this. I am bending this. Oh, wish I was in California. And in effect, I sort of am in your house or office. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Yes, you're probably right about the ICs, you know. They probably should go in. I'm not sure if this is like the moment when you you totally put them in though. Oh, flipping heck. Well, I would like to meet the dog. Oh. going well. There we go. There we 
There you go. What sort of dog do you have, Mark? No, oh, do love black labs. We had um, my family had Labradors. Well, has still. Um, <laughs> we don't feed them McDonald's cheeseburgers, though. <laughs> Never a good thing. I mean, the dog would definitely be happy to have them. Uh, so, pop the thing on, this time with all the knobs. I actually don't think it would have mattered hugely because what we're doing here is soldering the parts in with the stuff on the panel. And I might attempt to leave it at that. Do final assembly. Not very fun though. If you watched this, <laughs> you've literally watched nearly six hours of uh, paint drying fun to not see the module get made. But uh, well, you'll see soon enough if it has worked. Or maybe I'll take the one that is working and I'll just swap the black face plate <laughs> and throw this in the bin. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Do I need to put my nuts on? Yeah, the sort of moral here is you don't have to go too mad with it, but just to hold it in place. <laughs> Paint drying bands. Um, yeah. That looks like a cherry machine, largely. And so now the game is to Push these into position. Largely. Try to anyway. Try not to apply too much pressure. I'm also just double checking that the long side is on the left. Yes. I didn't cock that up. I had one job. <laughs> Checking this one, it's, it's also flush to the front. Also good, tips of orientation. So sick. I could probably solder it now. Should bend. Go about bending these up and bending this down. Shall we? It's not assembled, I'm afraid. <laughs> it is getting there. We are doing important things. We are not there. We are there. 
solder 45 things in. Okay. I'm not sure that won't be very difficult, will it? I mean, I should stop. But let's see where we go. Excuse me. Have a good weekend, Paul. Be well and cheering on. Have a random looping weekend. Dogs didn't know that one. Bye bye, Howard. Howard? Howard. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Nope. Well, um, it remains to be seen whether we'll actually complete this module on this live stream, I'm afraid, because you need to calibrate the bugger as well. Although calibration is quite straightforward from what I can tell. It is, does take a while, this one. Like the build, there's a reason why they say go to bed is because it is like a six hour build. Unless you're like, you know, early Behringer. I do have a multimeter. Hello. Um, do I actually need to use the multimeter is a question.
The thing is, I don't know how to use or how to build modules as such. I mean, I'm building one, but I don't know how it works. It's just like necessary, a necessary process to getting hold of certain things that are only available DIY or are cheaper. It's definitely badly soldered. I don't really know how to test for shorts. What am I testing? I think you said this, or someone said this last time. It was like, um, Definitely sensible, but not something that's in my wheelhouse necessarily. And yeah, I have done surface mount um, for the no bots. I built like the no bots um, buff mold, and it's um, surface mount's good. It's actually quite straightforward when you have the knack, and it's just another knack. Um, you know, just like Very satisfying when it pops. Like pow and just like wicks. <clears throat> SMD is surface mount design I think isn't it and it's little wee tiny 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 little chips which are like not the ones that go through a hole but sit literally on top of the um, on top of the components oh that's very nice and flush Did I solder all of the parts? Let's play the... Did Mylon Melodies solder the bits? It's actually really hard to see. How close can I get? OK. 
at it. That, not very well done. Uh, that's just a mechanical hole though. That's just like the clip that's holding it in. I'm looking across it to see are all, you know, is everything soldered? The joints are fairly hit and miss, as you can see. But largely okay. Not going to worry about it too much. Aha, that one. You're done fucked up. <laughs> That one is not soldered, and that would be a problem. Robot dog is on it like a bloodhound of soldering proficiency. Yeah, that's kind of it's sensible to check your work. Oh, is there an IC pin as well? Where? That, I think, is just the... Um, it's the... thing that's holding in the... Is there an IC pin? It was Tom Whitwell who said on the podcast that he was like, you feel an affinity to the thing that you've built. Um, it means something more that you've constructed it. You have an attachment, whether you like it or not. You spent a lot of, you literally, ah, what's this shit? That's just not, not at all been, not been soldered. And this is why we check, because I've looked at it several times, but didn't see that. Yeah, it is good. Definitely worth investing a bit of time in learning. All you have to do is learn how to solder, which is not hard. Just build some kits, like toy kits, I mean. Get some toys, build them. And just watch a few YouTube videos, and they explain how to solder. Um... And then this whole world is open to you. Dun, 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 dun. A nude Turing machine. Yes, I mean, the troubleshooting thing. But you won't need to troubleshoot because you'll get it right first time because you'll triple check your work. <laughs> but yeah, that is like... There's one thing, it's just double, triple check. I mean, you've seen me kind of half acidly double checking, but T 
here like some wool. Notch that way, my friend. Notch that way. Et voilà. Yeah, well, we kind of have done this. Next, mate the two boards together as shown. I will secure the screw. It's mating time, mate. Okay, mate. Cool, mate. They get that way, do they? <laughs> okay, so I'm trying not to do this with a huge amount of pressure. Oh, boom, mate, <laughs> mate, <laughs> cool, mate, excuse me. Job, you came back. <laughs> yes, I'm still going. Everything's fine. <laughs> this is perfectly fine. It's not nearly three o'clock in the morning. I'm fine. It's going well. I'm having a good time. There's a point where you just sort of like, it's just going to be quicker for me to finish it than attempt to sort of pick it up in the morning. And you don't get that sense of completeness in the video. This is my commitment to you, dear watcher, dear viewer. You know, I can't say that I've got a video where you can see a Turing machine be built from start to frigging finish in real time. Although this is two videos thanks to my computer turning itself off. I probably should have checked all the solder joints, but I've checked. I'm sure it'll be fine. There's absolutely no likelihood that something's gone wrong. I should add that this is not my first build. So I've just kind of, yeah. It's not my first rodeo, but yeah, it's not my first rodeo. Do you know, we're dangerously close to a point where I'm going to need to actually attempt to plug this in. I don't have any bits left over. <laughs> I'm going to unplug the soldering iron. I'm going to screw in holes or a few of these just because to make a mechanical connection. These literally hold the faceplate on. Um, I 
a weighty heft to it. That's love. That's what that is. That's that feeling. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> to quote my other melodies, um, I think what we need to do. So, so, put the metal PCB, put the two knobs on. Well, if you say so. What's the test, Robot Dog? Oh, are you talking about the shorting test? By all means, it doesn't talk about it in the manual. Attach the power cable and calibrate it. Um, if only I had a Eurorack modular synth to plug this into, how would one check for shorts? Do, 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 do. I mean, bear in mind, um, <laughs> I'm very much going down the Calvin Corner approach of let's just plug it in. I think it will work. And I mean, if I'm not going to check the whole thing. I'm just going to plug it in and see if it works. I need to make space for a Eurac modular synth to be on here. <laughs> yeah, this is actually not supposed to flicker like that. It's not actually flickering like that. Um, bear with me two seconds, please, caller. What's the... Um, Okay. I'm going to take your kind advice. Assuming that I know how to do this. Or I can work out even which way to plug it in. What are we checking? That the power pin's not connected. These two are connected. Isn't that as they should be? I mean, I have no idea what I'm looking for. That's the thing. Um, I'm just going to plug it in and see if it works. That's the, that's the way to do it. And then we'll do the calibration. What could possibly go wrong? Where's my modulus in? Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> um. <laughs> What's with all of these like crossy fingers emojis? Like, there's no, there's no need to crossy fingers. Look, I'll, I'll compare them. I feel about the same way, <laughs> so it must be fine. And um, from what I can see down, I mean, it looks very similar. Oh, there's like foxes doing it outside. <laughs> I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Do, 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 do. I'm excited to see if it will work. Of course, the um, <laughs> electric Ratimus has the truly greatest, that is the solution. <laughs> if it doesn't work, just swap it for the faceplate for the one that does work. Job done. The problem is I'm going to do this live on camera, so... Um, I 
feel like if something was going to, you know, if there was some essential thing to check, then they would uh, they tell you, wouldn't they, in the build instructions. Instead, it just says plug it in, attach the power, plug it in. And of course, you see the thing with a cheering machine is when you plug it in and turn it on, it doesn't power up. <laughs> red, 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 red. So, folks, <laughs> I'd say it's time. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> What's the Steve Jobs quote? Uh, real people ship. Let's ship it. Oh, that's weird. Why are those lights lit up? Should they light up? This is looks healthy. And what we need is a clock. Ooh. Hi. That looks like a cheering machine doing its thing. Yeah, I'd say so. Well, we don't know yet. I do have a Mordax data here, but um, what we need to do is plug it into the... How do we do this? Uh, I should be able to plug this in. Um, let me think about this. Because you do also have to calibrate it. Um, Um, yeah, let's, it says in the, like the, the way that you're supposed to calibrate something I've never done is that you connect the output to audio, um, and yeah, that should be kind of it, but yeah, that's correct, is having it hold the sequence. So in this instance, let's just plug it into the damn thing here. Um, have I got an input? Oh, oh. I think I do. Excuse me. It's very low rent. Oh my god. That is trying to keep this away from the soldering iron because that's hot. Um, uh, oh god. Now let's do this. Let's turn that right down. So you should be able to hear this when I actually get it going. Out to one volt. Because <laughs> this is all I'm ever going to do with it anyway, so if this works. Uh... Can you hear that? It's only in the left side, but... Oh, 
<laughs> the locking is not calibrated, definitely. Yeah, it's a bit maddening, isn't it? Let's have a... Going into a channel that is not expecting modular stuff. Anyway, only bloody works. Don't even worry about it. What were you all worried about with your calibration and your sensible doing it carefully and steadily and making sure it works? Well, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I do need to calibrate it, but I am going to go to bed because that's enough for now. It bloody works. Building modules, it's great. It only took six hours. <laughs> Non-stop. That was stupid, really. But yeah. for watching the chaos in shoe in shoe you watch the chaos in shoe but yeah what is the they say you plug the you're supposed to plug the output just to run it at audio rates and then Oh, I'm not going to do this. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Saving my battery. Um, I'm not going to calibrate it now. I really cannot be bothered. But I will calibrate it so that it locks correctly. But, yeah. Robot dog, you should do video, build videos. We need more. Tell me how to calibrate things. Because, oh, not how to... Uh, Check for shorts. Wah. <laughs> well, there you go. It works. Hang on. <laughs> Wait. Hey. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining me in my two-part awful paint-drying episode of A Man Builds a Thing and It Works, <laughs> which was, was a surprise, uh, let's be honest. So, yeah, that's it. I'm going to go. Everyone go to bed. Um, but when you get up, consider building Turing machines because it's not that hard. Just go check your work and do it slowly and steadily. So yeah, thank you. See you soon. And look out for the, the black Turing machine coming to a video near you. That's it. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs>